Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Yesterday we went to Chris Hendry's and I bought some bonsai pots. These pots are used, so here's the two I bought. And today I'm going to clean them up and I'm going to talk about patina on bonsai pots. Here is a look at a brand new bonsai pot. You can see the glaze is very shiny. The clay color is very even on the pot. There's no color variation. It's very clean. And yeah, it looks like a brand new pot. Now I'll show you one that's one of my oldest pots that is almost 30 years old. Here is one of my oldest pots and you can see the glaze has gone kind of a matte finish. And that's probably, you know, hands rubbing it over 30 years, picking it up and it just gets, you know, micro scratches in the surface of the glaze. The clay color, there's a lot of variation in color of the clay within the pot. Um, and it has some staining on it. It is, you know, an old pot gets kind of staining on it. And some people like that and some people don't. I have this pot from Kim's Nature that's very old and you can see on the sides here, there's kind of a haze from, uh, you know, water deposits or fertilizer and it really adds to the pot. It gives a variation on the side from kind of the light down to the deeper color of the glaze down here. And this is a pot that I really like that patina on it and I wouldn't try and clean that off at all because I think it looks really beautiful and it makes the pot look old. And this is an old pot. You can see the variation in clay color. Yeah, it's a really old pot and I like it because it looks old. And you can put a really old looking tree in an old pot and they, they look comfortable like an old pair of shoes. It's not just the glazed pots that get patina on them. The unglazed pots can look really beautiful with age. If you look at an old brick wall, they kind of get variation in the brick colors. Each brick turns a slightly different color due to the firing or the clay material and you get all this variation and you get weathering on it and it looks really beautiful. If you compare that to a new brick wall, it's very, usually a lighter color and very monotonous looking and nothing really to look at, but an old brick wall, they're just beautiful. Another example is an old violin. The patina on them is what makes them really beautiful. If you were to strip all that old varnish off and put urethane on it, it would be almost valueless. It's that old varnish and the old patina that really makes them beautiful. And some people appreciate that and some people don't. Um, it's a matter of personal taste, but uh, I'm one who really loves the patina on any object. It tells a story, whether it's a vehicle or a piece of furniture. I love looking at the old patina looking at what makes that piece look old versus a new piece. Here's a look at two of the pots I bought from Chris Hendry's yesterday. One is a glaze pot and it's very dirty and you can't really see the glaze very well because of all the staining on it. This is one pot that I would clean up. I don't think the patina really adds to the pot very much. It kind of obscures the beauty of the pot. The other pot is it looks a fairly new pot, but uh, a Chinese pot, but it's it's being used and it's got a lot of staining on it. Hard water stains. So I'm going to clean both of these pots up today. The first step with most things you clean is to use soap and water. So that's what we're going to start off with with these two pots. I'll take the drainage screens out of the pots and then I'll get them in the soap and water and I'll just soak them for a bit. That's out. And this one too. And these are small enough. I can just submerge them in the bucket and let them soak for a bit in the soap and water. All right, here I go. I'll get the unglazed pot in first. And the glazed pot in second. Here's a look at the pots in the water. So I'm just using dish detergent and water, warm water and just kind of letting them soak and then I'll scrub them down. I've had the pot soaking for about 10 minutes, so let's get them out and I'll give them a scrubbing. So that should loosen up any dirt on them. So I'll start with my big scrub brush.
You can see the lime on the bottom of the feet too. It could be fertilizer. I use rainwater so I don't get lime buildup, but I do get buildup from fertilizer because I add fertilizer to my water. You don't get a whole lot, but you get some. Now I'm gonna have to get in here with a toothbrush and get in all the nooks and crannies in the interior here. But that's getting pretty good. Okay, I'll give that a rinse off. So that pot is about as clean as I can get it with soap and water and scrubbing. So let's get out the next one now. Here's my unglazed pot. And I'll do the same thing. I'll scrub getting all that buildup off the lip of the pot here. Which is coming off. That's good. There is such a thing as nice patina versus patina that isn't very nice. Uh, patina that isn't very nice is maybe chips in your pot. You know, that just looks like the pot wasn't taken very good care of. Uh, excessive buildup of lime and that on your pots where it's, you know, becomes very unsightly. S you know, subtle like that green pot from Kim's Nature had a nice subtle blend of lime on it and it looked really good. But if you got ugly stains, maybe not so good. And again, that's all in the eye of the beholder. Some people might like really ugly stains, but I don't think most people do. I think, you know, the ideal patina is something that's old and it's been well taken care of that kind of a look where you know nothing too excessive is as clean as I can get it with just soap and water and scrubbing. So I'll give that a rinse like that and then we'll let it dry. When it's wet it looks perfect but then when it dries it might bring up some of the you know bits that uh, still have some calcium on them or stains. So we'll have a look at it when they're dry. I'll just rub them down with a cloth to help them speed up the drying process. The pots have dried off and you can see on the unglazed one there's still specks of lime on it. Over here on the lip. Over here. There's another spot there. Let's have a look underneath. You can see there's some lime deposits over here. On the bottom of the feet, there's some lime deposits that didn't come out with scrubbing. On the inside of the hole here, lime in there. So that needs further cleaning. Here's the glazed one, and it's very similar. You can see on the inside of the pot, there's horrible stains. Now this is, you know, that doesn't look good. That's not nice patina. So that has to come out. Um, at the bottom of the pot, I hope you can see this, but it's very difficult to photograph. There's, there's a haze at the bottom. It's like a, a matte haze that comes up to about here. Maybe you can see that. There, you can kind of see it there. 
it's all shiny and then it goes matte and there's kind of a haze that needs further cleaning if you look at the bottom of the feet they're all caked with calcium or something on the bottom on the inside well, we have all these stains the bottom is slightly stained but it's not too bad you know there's some stains on the glaze so it needs further cleaning so let's go to the next step now the next stage of cleaning of these pots is to use some kind of an acid some people use those commercial products that clean you know rust calcium and lime you've got to be very careful with those products they're very strong and they don't recommend you use it on marble uh, some of the metallic glazes so you've got to be really cautious using a strong product like that i'm just going to be using some simple ingredients today i'm going to be using apple cider vinegar and lemon juice okay so here's my lemon juice i'll just unscrew the cap oh it smells nice so this is just like that lemon extract you get in the grocery stores it's not fresh squeezed lemon juice uh, so i'm going to brush it on with a toothbrush on my my white deposits of calcium there and i'll do it all around the pot now some people they mix you know vinegar two parts water one part vinegar and they just soak the pot for like 20 minutes and it you know loosens up all the stuff i'm just brushing it on straight today always use uh glasses you don't want the spraying in your eyes it would really hurt i think so we'll see if this gets all that build up off so anywhere where, where there's a stain i'm just scrubbing uh, there was inside the hole here a bit more on the bottom really get that chop clean and the bottom of the feet had staining on them so it might be impossible to get every bit of build up off your pot but you know if you get most of it and the pot looks good that's awesome and all these products like um, lemon juice and uh, vinegar they have a pH level of about two to two and a half so they're not really really strong and if you find them too strong you can always dilute them now an interesting thing about you know pots and clay if you have a a low fired clay something like terracotta uh, the clay actually wicks moisture out of the soil so if this pot was full of soil and you watered it the clay would actually wick moisture away from the soil and that wicking action helps cool the roots on a hot day so one thing you want to do is keep all your the pores of your clay open so it breathes and that kind of leads us into oiling pots um, a high fired pot is fine to oil because the clay doesn't breathe it's uh non porous water doesn't soak into the clay but a low fired clay you wouldn't want to oil because then you're ruining that evaporative action of the clay and you know you won't get that cooling effect on the roots of your tree so just something to keep in mind and we'll we'll talk more about oiling towards the end of this cleaning process again it's hard to tell when the it's all wet like this if it's effective at all this this lemon juice but once it dries i'll know and i'll have to clean this off with some water some clean water rain water so i'll get out my spray bottle and i'll just spray it all down to clean the pot off all right i'll rinse off the lemon juice now just kind of spraying it so 
so wet the pot looks really nice but the tooth will come when it dries out I'm going to clean the blue pot with the apple cider vinegar it smells quite nice too so here I go I'll uh, try and get all that build up off of the pot brush it on trying to get rid of those calcium stains that don't look very good and all that hazing on the outside of the pot here at the bottom which just kind of hides the glaze a bit I mean it's not the worst thing in the world but it I think this pot would look better where you can see that depth change of the glaze from the light blue down to the almost black at the bottom and the other thing we had all that white calcium build up on the bottom of the feet so I've got to get that cleaned up or whatever that is I think it is calcium may take a little soaking the bottom of these feet there's a lot of buildup so I'll just kind of let it soak for a bit come back and do some more scrubbing and see if I can get it off you can see even when this is wet this calcium you can see it on the bottom of these feet it's very noticeable the unglazed pot is dry now and I can still see a few spots where there's some calcium buildup not very much just a few if you look underneath I've still got a slight stain by this one foot and it's still got calcium on the very bottom of the feet so I think there's a little bit in the hole here too I think the next step is to use some abrasives for the abrasives you can use steel wool or I've got marine wool which is just what is it it's bronze wool there's a close-up look at it so it's just a very mild thing to scrub that calcium off with or I've got 1000 grit wet sandpaper so you can just you know if you've got a bit of buildup on the bottom of your foot here you can just sand it and take it back carefully to the clay and you can do wet sanding or dry sanding so that's the next step I'm going to go over the pot and try and get all the little the last bits of the calcium off it so I'm just going to tear off a little piece of sandpaper you don't need much and the reason I'm dry sanding it is if you wet sand it all the stains disappear so you can't see where what you're doing so here's a little speck of calcium build up here so I just run my thousand grit sandpaper over top of that sanding it away now this buildup looks like there was a bit of a scratch in the clay and the calcium has filled the scratch up so very hard to get out and sometimes you get a little you know pinhole imperfection in the clay and it fills up with the calcium too which is what I think this one is and it's also very difficult to get out I can try the marine wool on that seems to do a good job now on the bottom of the feet wouldn't matter for a pot you're using but if you had a display pot that you know it's like a collector's pot that you don't have a bonsai in that's just a rare pot that you know some people collect pots uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't worry if this was a pot you're going to use about the bottom of the feet but yeah if it was a collector's pot you definitely want to have all parts of the pot nice and clean okay so now I've got to rinse all that what is it bronze or brass is it brass bronze I gotta rinse all that bronze off so I might have to scrub it with I don't know looks like I've got bronze in the clay that's interesting um, 
I might have to use some more acid on that. I'll try the lemon juice. See if that takes it out. Maybe it's a good way to get some patina on your pot is to rub it with bronze or steel. You get an iron oxide. Who knows? Okay, I'll uh, wipe that clean with a rag and I'll let it dry and we'll come back and see if I've made any progress on this pot. Here is a look at the unglazed pot and it's looking really nice. There is still one little pinprick of a thing. There's a little pin pole in the clay here and it's filled with this calcium so I'm just using a dental pick to try and pick that out a bit. It's very small. I don't think anyone would ever notice it. But. So that is quite good. On the bottom of the feet, I still have a little bit on this foot. I could try scraping it off with my little dental tool here. Maybe a little more acid on the bottom. I'll try some of that. It might soften that last little bit up. But it's it's pretty good, this pot. It's looking really nice. Yeah, so we'll, we'll just let that soak for a bit. Wipe it off, see if that's helping. I've rinsed the blue pot off and I'm just working on sanding some of this calcium off the outer part of the feet. I still have a bit of haze at the bottom of the glaze here. So I'm going to try my thousand grit, which is quite worn now, and just try polishing it with the thousand grit. Oh yeah, that's that's coming up nice. It's really getting a gloss at the bottom of the pot. Yeah, that looks really good. So that gets rid of that haze on it. So we'll go all the way around. Now you can use like a uh, car polish or anything on these glazes to make them really shine if you want. And you can get finer grits of sandpaper too. You can, you know, sand it with 2000 grit and then use a polishing compound to get it really, really shiny. It'll give a good depth to your glaze, that's for sure. Just like, you know, the finish on a car. Get rid of that haze on the inside here too. Nothing got that off, except the sandpaper. I don't know what it was. Sometimes you get, um, when you oil a pot, some people use linseed oil, some people use mineral oil. There's a lot of different oils you can use on a pot, vegetable oil. And things like uh, linseed oil, they'll, they'll leave a residue behind. I mean, linseed oil is one of the key ingredients to varnish. So something like vegetable oil is probably better if you want a temporary shine to your pot for a show or something. Because the linseed oil, it lasts. Okay, so that's... That's restored the gloss to the pot. That's really nice. In fact, the whole pot is looking really nice. Here is a look at the two pots all cleaned up. They're looking really nice. I prefer just, you know, the look of clean clay. You know, I think it looks really nice. Now this pot, you can still see on the bottom of the feet, there's a bit of calcium. It's in the pores of the clay. Very, very hard to get out. You might get it out if you like soaked it for 24 hours and then got in there with a really good scrub brush and it might get some of it out. I don't think you get it totally out. So what you can do is you can rub a little bit of oil on here and it just makes all that calcium disappear. If you want to, it, oiling a pot is totally optional. It's a technique that's often overused especially at bonsai shows. Um, you can take like an old pot and then you oil it up and it looks shiny and they don't look quite right. Um, 
and again it's a, a matter of personal taste uh, some people like the look of a pot all shined up with oil and other people don't it's totally up to you I will show you what these pots look like uh, with oil on them as an example so let's have a look at them before here's looking into the unglazed pot and you can see there is some stains uh, the clay is quite rough on the inside and you know dirt and calcium and fertilizer gets into the pores of the clay really hard to get out um, you can see the bottom of the pot the feet look pretty good they came out really nice you can still see a little bit of discoloration on the bottom of the feet but you know nothing nothing major it, it all looks quite nice it looks nice and clean and, and I, I kind of like the look of it the way it is now I think it has a bit of character to it let's look at the glazed one now so you can see it's nice and shiny you can really see the depth of the colors in it yeah it's quite nice now you can see the again the calcium on the bottom of the feet and there's a little bit on the inside still on the clay on the inside so we'll oil them up and you can see the difference I'm using mineral oil here but you can use any oil you can use olive oil uh, vegetable oil corn oil um, linseed oil any oil you want so you just need to get a bit of oil on a cloth and then rub it into the clay so here I go and you want to use a pretty clean cloth to do this with so here I'll start with this discoloration on the inside here you can see it just almost makes it invisible it just kind of disappears here's the bottom of the feet you can see I just rub the oil on and all that white calcium buildup just kind of disappears see that it's like magic and then you just rub your excess oil off and you can also oil the glazes here yeah so that's oiled up so looks quite nice looks nice on the other side so that's that pot done let's go to the unglazed pot all right here I go on the unglazed pot start with a lip here some people recommend you apply this oil a couple of days before a show that way the oil has time to kind of soak in and it doesn't look quite so shiny and you know once you put the oil on you should rub as much of it off as you can so it doesn't look oily it should be dry to your touch and you got to be careful too oily pots are very slippery in your hands so you don't want to drop them and you can see the oil the oil gets soaked in by the clay but it sure puts an even finish on the pot and again you know it's not everyone's taste but uh, it's a very common practice oiling the pots up before a show getting them looking very clean very consistent even finish on them and you know it adds a bit of shine and again some people like that and some people aren't so keen a pot like this you know which has very fancy features on it a bit of shine can bring out those features so, you know it's not all bad oiling up pots there are positive advantages so I'm just rubbing that oil the excess oil away removing most of that shine get the underside of the feet here and 
and that'll make those look quite nice. I found, you know, you don't think of the underside of a pot so much when you're going to a show. You're more worried about the outside, but I often find that, you know, photographers, they get sometimes down at low angles and they take pictures of trees and then you see some of the pots aren't very clean on the underside or they have spider webs or insect eggs or something. So, yeah, it's very important before a show to clean all parts of your pot because you never know someone's going to come down really low angle and photograph your tree and pot and you'll you know it doesn't look very good in the photograph if you have any of those things i mentioned on the pot it just uh, takes away from the overall look of the picture and your bonsai yeah so that's looking pretty nice that looks really good i haven't done the inside I'll do a little bit on the inside just to show you how consistent looking you can get your clay. There's those stains that'll just disappear. So a lot of times what this oil does is it makes an older pot look brand new. And you know, it could look nice. And again, as I said, it's a matter of taste. If you want your pot to look brand new, Oiling might be the thing for you. If you want your pot to look old, maybe you want to leave some of that patina on. And maybe you want to stop with just the washing process with the soap and water. Maybe you don't want to use the acid on your lime. You know, it all depends on what you're after. So there, the inside of the pot is looking really nice too. <laughs> Looks like a brand new pot. Or one that's never been used. There's a look at the pot. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. Very nice, in fact. Nice to get it all cleaned up. There is a look at the two pots side by side. They look show ready. They just really look beautiful now. Let's fly in and have a closer look at the pots. Really looking nice. Wow, this one got the glaze all shone up. The feet look good. Yeah. Amazing pots, you know, you can go right up close. Look at the details and you don't notice any, you know, calcium or anything. They look really nice. Well, today we went from grow pots to show pots. They really look beautiful. They, they turned out really nice. I'm really pleased. The hard part will be picking a tree out for these pots. That'll come in the future. I hope I got you thinking about patina on your pots today. Thinking about it and maybe looking at pots and seeing what you like. And that's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. Mm -hmm.